As we think about supplementation programs in a cow-calf enterprise, oftentimes producers' uh, primary concern is going to be with what type of supplement should I be feeding. Should I feed cubes or cake or liquid or tubs or uh, should I be feeding hay? I mean, I don't even have when, to be in front of the And those are all that. important decisions. That's cool. But truthfully, the success or what failure they, uh, of any supplementation program depends primarily upon the quantity and quality of the forage that's being supplemented whether that forage is rooted out there in the pasture as standing forage, or as oftentimes the case, especially in the eastern part of Texas and pretty much across the southern U.S., hay is gonna be a big part of that program uh, in the fall, uh, winter, and maybe even into the early spring. So how can a cattleman know if there's enough forage out there in the pasture uh, for those cows to get full uh, every day? And probably the mo one of the more practical ways is to observe the grazing behavior of those cows. If cows uh, would have their way, they'll typically have two major grazing events, depending on weather and humidity and day length and those type things. But they'll typically have a significant event in the morning, a grazing event in the morning. Uh, midday, if those cows are full, you ought to find them in the shade somewhere, oftentimes maybe uh, close to the water, where they'll be ruminating or chewing their cud processing, if you will, and further digesting the forage that they harvested that morning. And then typically, again, depending on the weather and environmental conditions, maybe late afternoon, early evening, they'll have another significant grazing event. So an interpretation might be if you see cattle out there in the middle of the day hustling trying to and grazing trying to fill up, maybe that's an indicator that those cattle are a little bit short on forage availability and are not able, to fit, not able to get their fill on a daily, daily basis. And then you can also read things like their, their fill. You know, if you look at, the cow, at a cow from her left side, that area behind her ribs and in front of her hip is a good place to, to get an indication of rumen fill. If she's really sunken in there, kind of drawn, um, and that's maybe an indicator that uh, she's not getting full uh, every day on forage. So again, grazing behavior is a great way to tell. Uh, whether or not those cows are getting enough to eat and forage availability as well as quality is a huge determinant in the success or failure of your supplementation program. Another important, to, uh, another important indicator in terms of the nutritional status uh, in a cow-calf operation is body condition score of those cattle, uh, of the cows especially. And so maybe that's a little bit longer term measure, but certainly as we evaluate body condition, that's an excellent indicator as to, the, as to the nutritional status of that cow. Maybe oftentimes difficult if we see those cows on a daily basis for us to determine significant changes in body condition. Uh, so that's where somebody, uh, when the kids come home for the weekend, uh, maybe a spouse can go out there with you intermittently and look at those. It uh, can oftentimes well, be this, a valuable uh, red, appraisal of, red of changes or yellow, in body white condition. Face horn cow. Um, we've, if you're interested in learning more about body condition and haven't picked it up uh, on this channel, uh, if you go back to the main menu for this channel, we've got some video clip there wherein uh, Dr. Gill and myself describe the body condition scoring system with video. Of, of cows uh, describing that body condition scoring system. On a, it's a one to nine system. One being extremely thin, nine being extremely obese. Well, we, you know, we've talked about grazing behavior and using the grazing behavior of the cattle to know whether or not there's enough forage out there for them to fill up on a daily basis. The other thing that's always of interest, and we get a lot of questions from producers, is, well, what's the quality of the forage that I have out there? And oftentimes the observations made, well, I got a lot of stuff growing out there, standing out there in the pasture. Is it good forage? Well, certainly uh, this year is no, is, is no exception. We've had a pretty good weed crop. And as we think about forage that's available and preferable to cattle, oftentimes the weeds, especially as they get bigger and more mature, are not palatable. And, the, and so while they may look like there's something to eat, uh, in a cow's mind, that's really not something to eat. Uh, the other thing that we know is as forages, especially grasses, as they get more mature, they go down in quality. Fiber content goes up and that tends to dilute then the protein and energy content of those forages. And it's unfortunate, but the poorer the quality, the less a cow can eat. And the higher the quality, the more vegetative it is, the more a cow can eat. And so it'd be nice if the poorer the quality, the more they could eat, but it just doesn't work that way. The more fibrous it is, the slower it's digested in the rumen, and it's kind of like putting water in a hose. How much is coming out one end is a function of how much can go in uh, the, uh, the, the opposite end. 
And so uh, as forages get more mature, they begin to put on a seed head. Uh, as we think about our warm season perennial forages, that's typically late summer or fall. But as they put on that seed head, as coastal Bermuda grass gets mature, the quality goes down, the fiber content goes, goes up, and so the more the cattle need to eat. That can really come into play, especially on young cattle uh, that can't handle, uh, they can't consume uh, a significant amount of that fiber. So the limitation on forage intake actually limits the performance uh, of those younger cattle.